And this is a super special moment, not just for tourism in Monroe County, but for anybody and everybody that's ever lived and just loves Monroe County, especially Coco Plains, Tennessee, and enjoys music and loves bluegrass and the legacy that Josh Graves has left. So, for those of you who do not know, the Tennessee Music Pathways is actually a statewide trail that was developed by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. The trail connects visitors to people, places, and genres that are significant to music, not only in Tennessee, but in America. So these folks didn't just make music great in Tennessee, but they influenced music all across our nation and the world, and Josh Graves is one of them. We are proud that Monroe County and Teleco Plains will now be featured as a location, allowing us to showcase yeah. one of our own, Uncle Josh Graves, and his contributions to bluegrass music. So, if you guys will give a warm welcome to Mr. Dave Jones from the Tennessee Department of Tourism. All right, well, what a perfect day to be here. And by the way, congratulations. Y'all celebrating 200 years? Yes, sir. Yeah. Isn't that something? Well, on behalf of uh, Commissioner Ezell, I want to uh, say hello and congratulations on um, another opportunity to just showcase uh, who you are, which is a, a great story to tell. Uh, we began uh, sort of an inventory just a few years back on our music heritage across Tennessee. We, everybody claims they own something about music, right? And we really own it. I mean, we don't have to make this stuff up because there are actually seven genres of music they call Tennessee home. And it's blues, bluegrass, country, gospel, soul, rockabilly, and rock and roll. Now ask me how I remember all that is <laughs> another story. But we own that. That is, uh, either they were born here or they came to Tennessee to make their music. I mean, you look at uh, Garth Brooks' Seven Diamond Awards. He's from Oklahoma, but where did he come to do the recordings uh, that earned seven Diamond Awards? He came to Tennessee. And so we're really proud of the music heritage that we have here. Uh, how many of you saw the Ken Burns uh, documentary on PBS? Anybody see that? Uh, that opportunity came up actually about a year ago, and we found out about it. We met with uh, Mr. Burns, and uh, we became a sponsor of that documentary. And if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Uh, we probably are going to get about 40 million people. Uh, they're going to watch that series over the course of two years. It's already gone through one series on the local PBS. It'll go to Europe, uh, and then it'll go uh, come back into the U.S. And it's it's online now, so you can see it. So, of that 16 hours of documentary, we figured over 60 percent of the stories in that documentary are related directly to Tennessee. So uh, that's, that's a country music documentary. It really was a documentary uh, about Tennessee. So we began this program called the Tennessee Music Pathways, and it basically identifies places, uh, not only uh, events or, or venues, like the Grand Ole Opry House and things like that, but also other places that, that pay tribute to those who make uh, our music heritage. We, we've looked at uh, identified grave sites, we've uh, identified a lot of different places, and certain venues and certain places, we've actually uh, created a marker uh, that they can, can display. Elaine and I began talking, and she's really the reason I'm here. Well, actually, Josh is the reason I'm here, but uh, she is the reason uh, uh, that I'm here. And uh, by the way, continue to support your tourism budget, all right? Because uh, that helps uh, her. But uh, so I'm here today to bring you one of our Tennessee Music Pathway markers. And uh, you're welcome to put it outside. Uh, it's just one more thing that will draw attention to people who are coming here already and uh, will spend some money, hopefully, but hopefully give you the opportunity to have a transaction, not just a transaction, but an emotional reaction with those guests that come, all right? So I want to say congratulations to the family. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here, 
And if we want, this isn't very fancy, but uh, Belena, let's do it. One, two, three. So there we go. That gives me too much credit. As soon as I became the tourism director, someone said, hey, Blaina, you want to know something cool about Tolga Plains? And I was like, what is that? And she said, Josh Graves was born there. He's from Tolco Plains. This lady has always is a massive part of historical preservation throughout Monroe County. And the fact that we have an opportunity to preserve some of our musical heritage through this is even better. And her name is Joe Stakely, your Monroe right. County Director of Archives. Like Blaina said, last fall when we were very fortunate to have Blaina join our Monroe County team, I told her that we did have someone eligible with Tennessee Music Pathways, and his name was Josh Graves, and he was born on a, in a little white house on the hill just down the road. And he's played such an important part in bluegrass music over the years. Um, actually, he's named the King of Dobro because he is the one who really has kept the Dobro in bluegrass music all these years. And it's so important for us to preserve that. It's important for us to, observe, uh, to preserve our history and observe those who have played an important part of making Monroe County what it is. And it's important to us to be able to say, hey, look here, the King of Dobro was born in Plains. That's something cool. Something we should be very, very proud of. And I'm just very fortunate that I was able to play a little bit part of that. And it just so happened that it seemed like the stars and everything else just aligned to where we could have this event at the Terracotola Skyway Festival. And we got to do the unveiling and the Dobro competition that we've had planned since last year just fell into place to be on this day too. So it's, it's just been great. And just thank you so much. I'm going to introduce our county mayor, Eugene. Thank you, Miss Joe, Blaina, Dave. Thank you for your presentation. You know, today is a very special day. Not only it's a special day for Monroe County, it's a special day for the Graves family. One thing that's very special about Monroe County is we love our own. We love our people here at the county. And you know, young people today have heroes and people they look up to that sometimes is not the, the best to look up to. But we want to honor some true heroes. And Mr. Graves is one of those heroes that has made Monroe County proud. And Joe has elaborated that he's been dubbed the king of the Dobro and how excited we are about that. How excited we are to have our location here is a pathway location for music. You know, this past week I was in Nashville. I had to go to some meetings. I passed by the Ryman Auditorium every day to go to these meetings, and I thought, you know what? Monroe County is going to get to showcase some music as well, and today's that day. And if I could have Tim come up, and we're just going to... We're going to honor and we're going to love this family today, and that's what Monroe County is all about. It's not about me. It's not about Blaine or Joe. It's about this wonderful family and this wonderful county. Absolutely. And it says, Monroe County Bicentennial Event, the Josh Graves Birthplace Memorial on the Tennessee Music Pathway, October 26, 2019. Whereas the county of Monroe was established on November 13, 1819, and can continued to serve its citizens for 200 years. And whereas Mr. Josh Graves was born in Teleco Plains, Tennessee on September 27, 1927, and amid a successful music career was inducted into the IBMA Hall of Honor in 1997. And whereas Monroe County wishes to honor Mr. Graves and his legacy, we hereby present the Graves family with this certificate of gratefulness and recognition of Mr. Graves and his impact on bluegrass music and, most importantly, Monroe County. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. 
He had on bluegrass music. Uh, he was uh, he was a major major star in bluegrass. Uh, I've been doing this. I've been playing bluegrass music 44 years, and, and all I've ever heard from about Upper Jaw was great things. And uh, I asked him one time. I said, "How did how does that happen?" He said, "You treat everybody like you want to be treated," and that's that's what he did. He was a, he was such a kind person to uh, to young people coming up to play Dobro. He brought me a Dobro when I was uh, 14 years old up here at the Roundhouse, is where he brought it to me, and a stack of records. And he said, here you go, kid. If you can hear this, you can play it. And I started. But but he didn't do that just for me. He did that for every young person there was. I mean, he wouldn't give them a guitar and a stack of records, but he'd give them a record and say, here, try to play this. And he was, um, he was so influential. If there's a Dobro player out there, they were influenced by Uncle Josh. Uh, no two ways about it. He was, uh, he put that instrument into bluegrass music. Uh, if he hadn't, have, it wouldn't have been here. You know, and 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 I have to say that that uh, I followed in his footsteps for forever. And uh, it's it's a wonderful road to follow him because he 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 left such a wide path. You know, for for all of us Dobro players and, and Jerry Douglas and Mike Aldridge and all those guys that were great players. They learned from Uncle Josh. You know, and uh, just like I did. And so he. He was a wonderful man, and uh, I'm honored to be part of this today. So. For those of you who aren't familiar with Tim, he, um, he is a Grammy Award winner himself and a member of the Bluegrass Hall of Fame, so it's an honor to also have him here as well as his brothers. We appreciate it so much. For you guys allowing us to display these items on loan, that means a whole lot to us. And just know that we are very appreciative as a community to have you guys here to have these things here. And to just know that you guys are just as excited as we are about making sure that people continue to know about Uncle Josh. Yeah. So at this time, we'll let, we'll actually, we'll ask everybody, Dave and the mayor, Joe, and everybody that would like to be a part of the ribbon cutting to kind of go ahead and hop under the ribbon, you know. I created an obstacle before. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then Josh is going to place the dobro, and then we'll do the official ribbon cutting. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, right, right. Thank you. 